Subscribe to The Honest Critique for current affairs, movie, book, and product reviews. Also, make sure you press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. The views, information, or opinions expressed during the video series are solely those of the individuals and do not necessarily represent those of The Honest Critique and its employees. The following video contains strong language which may be offensive to some viewers. Viewer discretion advised. Hello and welcome to a very special episode we are recording today. On April 14, Iran launched a barrage of around 300 attack drones and missiles from within its border towards Israel, triggering air raids throughout the country around early Sunday morning. Israel, with the help of its allies, intercepted 99% of the drones and missiles fired at its territory. I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Eyal Pinko, who is a senior research fellow at Begin Shadat Center for Strategic Studies at Bar Ilan University, a former naval commander in the Israeli Navy and intelligence agency for 30 years. So thank you so much, sir, for taking your time and speaking to us. So before I actually move on to what happened today, I wanted to take a little flashback to the events on April 1st. Uh, which the Iranian government have mentioned that it was an unprecedented escalation by Israel because it targeted a Brigadier General Mohammad Reza Zahedi, one of the uh, revolutionary guard corps commander. And this is where Israel slightly moved uh, from targeting uh, the Hezbollah uh, to eliminating Iranian leadership in Syria. So do you see that escalation uh, was the point which leads to the response by Iran today and was that the point where Iran decided to attack Iran, uh, Israel? Thank you, thank you very much for your time. <coughs> and if I may call back any embassy, okay? <coughs> Israel attacked uh, a senior uh, level man uh, general from the Iranian uh, Revolution Guard uh, attacked uh, a nearby building near the uh, Iranian embassy in Damascus, in Syria, <clears throat> in which over there, senior uh, senior general was there uh, uh, in, in in during a meeting uh, to coordinate uh, more steps against Israel with uh, Hezbollah, the two organizations that is ruling Lebanon with other Shia uh, militia from uh, Iraq that are basically uh, a part of the Iranian uh, forces. And they did uh, uh, <clears throat> a meeting near the embassy. It was not in the embassy. It was near the embassy. And Israel, with very accurate intelligence, knew that the meeting is happening. At the same moment, the, in the, the intelligence knew the, the meeting is occurring. They put up uh, uh, air, aircraft with a missile and uh, killed this uh, general, which is part of the terror organization, uh, Iranian the Revolution uh, Guards. This, just to remember, this is this was declared by the uh, EU. It was declared by NATO, by the US as terror organization. The Iranian Revolution Guard is a terror organization. It's not some kind of charity one. And by the way, everything that I'm saying now is according to the media. Israel never admit that we, this was an Israeli attack. It's only by the media, it's only by the Iranian perspective. And this is a very important part. So, of course, uh, if you want to look in a very, very broad aspect, the war that Israel faced in Gaza because of the Hamas-ISIS attack on October 7, more than half a year ago, is part of the Iranian uh, um, campaign because in in, uh, in the Iranian perspective, they don't fight directly. They are, they are sending their proxies like the Yemen Houthis, the rebel Houthis, an organization that attacking ships in Bab el-Mandeb in, uh, uh, in the entrance to the Red Sea. It's, uh, they're using the Hezbollah uh, the organization, in, using the Shia militia in Iraq. And of course, part of that is the Hamas-ISIS organization in Gaza Strip. By the way, uh, 
uh, they are saying that Israel is, uh, is uh, you know, occupying uh, the territories. But Gaza is not being ruled by Israel. Gaza is a, is a, is a land that is being ruled by Hamas. It's a Hamas uh, land. It's not, it's not something which is uh, under Israeli control. So this we must uh, emphasize here. So uh, in a very, very unusual way, uh, after uh, claiming that Israel attacked the building, not the embassy, the building in Syria and killed uh, the general, the Iranian general, uh, Israel had a very good intelligence saying that last night Iran is going to attack. So all the uh, Israeli military forces and security forces came into uh, high alert. And indeed, as the intelligence uh, said, a massive, massive attack came from Iran. Uh, this uh, attack included, if you want me to, to stop for a second or to pause. So that's actually what I wanted to ask you next. Can you describe the types of weapons that Iran launched at Israel during this attack? What does the choice of this weapon suggest about Iran's military capabilities and strategic intentions in the region? Yes. So Iran uh, fired yesterday more towards Israel, more than five, uh, 500 in a matter of two hours. It included a uh, Shahed 139, a huge drone, uh, with 40 kilos of explosive flying 2,700 kilometers from Iran uh, to uh, Israel. More than, more, most of them were intercepted by the Israeli uh, defense layers, aerial defense layers. On top of that, they were firing also hundreds of cruise missiles uh, to the range of 2,500 kilometers with 200 kilo of, uh, of explosive in each uh, missile. All of them were intercepted once again by the Israeli uh, defense layers. And on top of that, they also fired some type of ballistic missiles. We don't know if it was the Sajil or Imad or other types. Uh, it was not released. Uh, so once again, ballistic missiles that were intercepted by the Aero uh, interceptor, one, uh, once again, uh, one of the defense layers. So Israel is using multi-level defense layers, everything with Israeli technologies. And this was in basically what happened yesterday night in a few hours. So most of the Iranian drones and projectiles were intercepted by Israel and its allies. Could you explain uh, that for our viewers? How effective were these defense measures uh, in yesterday's attack by Iran? Some of the interceptions were made by uh, aircrafts, fighter aircrafts, that were uh, in the same hour of the attack. Israel identified there is uh, there are missiles and drones in the air from very very long distances. I speak about something like two thousand kilometers. Israel identified there is attack. While identifying the attack, Israel uh, put on the aircraft, along with that, with uh, coordination with the United Kingdom, a British air, uh, aircraft that took off uh, from Cyprus, and uh, as well uh, also uh, American aircraft that took off from uh, the carriers in the Arab uh, Sea. Um, on top of that, or with that, also Jordanian uh, aircraft. So in total, Part of the interception were uh, fighter aircraft from Jordan, the US, the UK, and Israel that identified, according to the Israeli coordination, Israeli detection measures, detect uh, the missiles and the drones on the way, send the aircraft which fired on them air to air missiles, and uh, eliminate them uh, totally. In the context of this heightened tension between uh, Israel and Iran, do you foresee the Israeli government responding to the Iranian attack? Uh, or do you think it will be pushed to pursue a more diplomatic option in the aftermath of such a significant assault? First, as, as I said in the beginning, uh, this is very unnormal Iranian behavior. Usually Iran sending some other people to, to get killed for her. They are not, saying, they're not uh, doing a direct. So since 1948, this is the first time it's happening which is very interesting for that. Um, the, I can say that from here, from, this, from Israel, you see that there are many voices 
and uh, most of them are calling to hit Iran back, uh, not to retaliate, but to but to give some kind of answer to attack back and not to stand because we understand, as according to the um, um, Iran culture, if you are not showing force, they you, they understand that you are weak. So going to forgiveness and to peacemaking, as the Indian people are, are wants to have peace with everyone, Israelis want the same. But unfortunately, uh, the Iranian takes it as uh, something which is weakness, not uh, strength. So I, I believe that the Indian uh, people, as as we are very similar in that, understand that this is a strength if you are keeping your peaceful inside. Uh, they don't believe in that. Um, so there are many, many ministers now calling and people, uh, senior generals and admirals, calling, calling the government to uh, to hit Iran and not to sit in peace and quiet. While that, you see that the Biden administration and the British are calling Israel not to not to do anything to to be in peace and quiet, saying, "Okay, this was that we helped you." Now don't don't do anything. Let's go to uh, as peaceful as we can. This is the this is the powers that are working now on the Israeli government. Uh, I do believe I, it's only my assessment. You know, in the Middle East, you can only forecast the past. You cannot forecast really the future. If you ask me, uh, you know, if you ask me twenty four hours ago, I will tell you that Iran will never send missiles here, and I know Iran very well. And I was totally surprised. Uh, so I do believe that because of the international pressure, mainly from the U.S. and the Biden administration, with the help and the aid that the the American gave Israel, Israel will not do anything uh, and will let it will let it go. This is what is now my assessment for now. We see the Gaza Strip and the northern borders are already active fronts for Israel, and with Hamas and Hezbollah as proxies for is Iran. Do you see this Iranian attack might impact the dynamics of this existing conflict or do you see uh, Iran might directly not attack Israel after this particular assault and would rather choose to use its proxies to attack I Israel? I think it's a very good point what you raised. We need to, we need to understand that Israel in the last uh, six months is fighting in four fronts. It's not only against Hamas ISIS. Everything was started by Hamas ISIS uh, six year, six uh, months ago. But Israel is still uh, uh, defending itself from attacks that are coming from Yemen, from the rebel Houthis, um, which it's something like three or four hundred missiles in the last few months that are coming and being intercepted from the south. While that Israel is being from some kind of terrorism that are coming from the Palestinian Authority. Once again, the Palestinian Authority, it's aut autonomous authority. This is not under Israeli control. This is under PLO uh, control and some, some Hamas. So there are riots and terror attacks. Only two days ago, uh, uh, people from the Palestinian Authority just uh, murdered brutally a 14 years old uh, guy that Israeli that went with his uh, ship, uh, you know, to, uh, to give them some food. Uh, so there is still terror attacks that are coming from the Palestinian Authority. And with that, also, we are facing attacks from Hezbollah. Last, uh, to, yesterday morning, before the Iranian attack, uh, Hezbollah, the terror organization from Lebanon, fired more than 100 rockets and missiles towards Israel. More than 100 in two hours. So we are uh, suffering from Hezbollah's attack in the last uh, six months, 100, 200 attacks per day, per day. It's, it's amazing an amount of attacks. Israel is trying not to go there. Israel is trying to, uh, you know, they are firing at us, we are firing back, and let's go and moving forward. There is no really massive maneuver or any maneuver towards Lebanon. Uh, we understand that the Lebanese people don't really like uh, Hezbollah, especially the Christian population over there, but Hezbollah is ruling uh, Lebanon. And it's the, the, the financial situation in Lebanon is terrible. So Israel trying not to go there. Israel is trying just to keep on with Hamas, to finish the war with Hamas ISIS and bring peace uh, back to Israel, not going to the, the other arenas. 
And you know, as we saw in the Second Lebanese War in 2010, one uh, Hezbollah attack on five soldiers led to 51 days of a very, very not nice war. It was a very bad war for all sides. Uh, so Israel doesn't want to go there. Israel wants peace. And um, as I said, you know, once one spark, one light, small uh, light can light uh, in a huge flame all the, the region. Israel tried to maintain the, the issue as, as that, just to hit back if it's being hit and not go to a, a larger scale war. So the last thing that I want to ask you before I let you go is, do you think in some sort of a way to not retaliate is to hand over a moral victory to Iran at this point of time? Yeah, I, I don't know if you saw uh, the Arab news the last uh, 12 hours. All the Arab countries' news are um, laughing on Iran, saying uh, there are so even a video uh, with a launcher, missile launcher, and instead of missile, they have over there cucumbers. Um, I think that, you know, the normal people understand that we are a peaceful country, we want peace. And uh, we, as, as you, uh, the Indian people, we are, we are showing our uh, uh, not going as a, strength, a point of uh, strength, not as a weakness. And uh, if, the Iranian, if the Iranian regime wants to see that as a, that is a victory, I'm saying let them celebrate. We, everyone else knows the truth. Everyone else knows that it's, it was a failure attack. Only one missile hit, one, one out of 500. It caused almost no damages. We, we made it, uh, our defense layers were perfectly and did an excellent job. So if they want to, uh, you know, to dance with happiness that they launched 500 missiles, let them do that. We want to live in peace. We don't want to, to do anything else. So thank you so much, sir, for taking your time and speaking to us. It was an honor hosting you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.